Okay, hi everyone. Um, this is another video on um, taking uh, turning effects of moments, and specifically today I'm going to teach you about um, how to calculate or how to solve uh, problems that involve a double pivot. Okay, so this is um, turning effects of forces. And specifically, we talk about problems with a double pivot. Okay, just make sure you can see. Okay, so let's just consider um, our situation here and all the very simple turning effects of forces um, questions. We always deal with a single pivot and then you balance off the um, anti-clockwise moments with the clockwise moments. But when you have a situation like this, so let's consider this question now. You have a beam. Okay, and then the question would usually say that this is a uniform beam of mass um, 80 kg with a length um, say 8 meters no I think I'll just change this to 50 kg that would be easier okay so 50 kg and when you see the word uniform beam it means that the center of gravity is exactly at the center so you can draw the weight the weight will be 500 Newton all right um, so the whole length is 8 meters so over here is 4 meters and over here is 4 meters all right so and then now because it's a double uh, double pivot question so I have a string here and then another string here so I want you to just take it as point P and point Q and this acts like your pivot because this entire um, uh, beam is balanced by these two not a single one but a double one right and on this end I'll place a box by now you should know why I place it over the, the line so that the line of action of the weight will lie exactly at the edge here and this box I give it as 40 kg so it's 400 Newton the length here 1 meter And I'll have a person, and he is 800 Newton. Okay, 800 Newton. Um, let's fill in the relevant information now. So let's say this is in the center. So I'll call this 2 meters, 1 meter. So you can see this at the center, this is 4 meters, 1, 2, 1, alright? And this must be 4 meters as well, so let's just give this as 1 meter and 3 meter. Okay, it's not to scale, but it doesn't matter, I just want to make it as an illustration. Okay, mm, this is F1 and this is F2. Now why F1 and F2 is because... Um, with all the downward forces, um, these forces are actually pulling it up. Alright? Okay, so how do we solve uh, questions that has a double pivot um, in this sense? How do you actually solve what is the tension or what is the force on both strings at point P and Q? Where is the pivot? Now, to solve a double pivot, you have to do a few things first huh? step one so let's just um, take P as the pivot okay I repeat we take P as the pivot so once you take P as a pivot you ignore the false one you just literally take this as the point so you will consider the 400, the 800, the 500, and F2. 
as the forces in play with respect to point P. Okay. <clears throat> So like I mentioned before, you need to um, write this statement well. So anti-clockwise moments equals to clockwise moments. So let's consider all the anti-clockwise moments with respect to point P as a pivot. So this will be like 400 times 1 because the distance is from the force to the pivot. Okay, so what other anti-clockwise moments are there? This is clockwise. This is also clockwise, but this is anti-clockwise. So F2 is anti-clockwise. And the length is 1 plus 1 plus 2. So that is 4. Okay, and the clockwise moment, very easy. 800 times 2. 500 times 3. Right, and then you calculate this. You have um, 400 plus 4F2 equals to 1600 plus 1500, and your F2 is 675 Newton. So, taking P as a pivot, taking P as a pivot, my F2, the force. On this on this string F2 is 675 Newton. So let's work out on the other side now. Okay? On the other side, what do you do now? You take Q as a pivot. Now, once you take Q as a pivot, many things will change. Basically, uh, you have to really consider again where are the um, anti-clockwise moments and clockwise moments. Alright, so let's try. by principle of moments anti-clockwise moments, zero to clockwise moments okay now this is the pivot now so you ignore F2 and we have to find F1 so when this happens 400, 800, 500 becomes the anti-clockwise moments and F1 becomes the clockwise moments okay 400 times now the length is no longer 1 it is actually from Q now because Q is a pivot so it's 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 so 400 times 5 plus 800 times 2 plus 500 times 1. Okay, so these are all the anti-clockwise moments. This one here, F1 will be the clockwise moment. Okay, F1 will be the clockwise moment. So it goes to F1 times, let's see what's the length now, 2 plus 1 plus 1, 4. Okay, let's work that out. <clears throat> F1 will be 1025 Newton. Okay, so there we have 1025 Newton and 675 Newton at play here, trying to balance up this whole um, this whole system. All right. Now um, you can also double check your work to see if it's correct. Okay, and how do we do that? So I'll just write here, F1 is 675, F2 is 1025 Newton. So what happens when you add these two forces together? You get 1700 Newton. Now this is actually the upward force of F1 and F2. Let's see 
what happens when you add these three forces together? Okay, so the downward forces is actually the same. So this is one way to check whether you have um, calculated correctly or not. Because it really makes sense. Um, all the downward forces, all the downward forces must be balanced by the upward forces. Okay? And they are usually not equal because of the positioning of these um, uh, uh, objects. This two is going to be equal if it's just in the center and you can actually work that out using this method. Alright? So this is actually the turning effects of forces double pivot question. Okay? Hope you understand.